nie mogłoby być inaczej. My cały czas w atmosferze Świąt Bożego Narodzenia i też taki temat zaproponuje pani Aleksandra Kowalska, która już jest w Kujawsko-Pomorskiej Szkole, w sali lekcyjnej, udekorowanej świątecznymi gadżetami. Dobry wieczór. Czy dobrze zapowiedziałem temat lekcji? Bardzo dobrze. Ja nawet miałam zaśpiewać, ale się boję, że nas Facebook zablokuje. To nie będę może śpiewała szlagieru świątecznego, bo jeszcze raz pozna i to, więc zaczynajmy. Welcome back after the break. Mogłabym zapowiadać chyba kurczę w boksie e, kolejne rundy. E, słuchajcie, witajcie po przerwie i teraz już przejdziemy do takich bardziej myła teoria, jakie słówka i tak dalej, i tak dalej. Przejdziemy sobie do takich bardziej kulturowych rzeczy, a mianowicie jak się obchodzi święta w krajach anglojęzycznych, których wybrałam kilka. A te takie największe, najważniejsze, e, zobaczycie czym to się różni e, i na koniec wybrałam jeszcze taki ekstra topik, jak zdążymy, to może uda się zrealizować. Ok, so please enjoy the lesson about Christmas traditions in English speaking countries. So, let's start with Christmas in the UK. I hope you can see uh, the picture well. And in this picture you can see Trafalgar Square, which is a square in London, a very famous one. And in this square, every year, they put up a Christmas tree that I mentioned in the previous lesson comes from Norway, from Oslo. So actually this Christmas tree is, I think, from three years ago and it's decorated and it was uh, put uh, in the middle of Trafalgar Square for the Londoners to enjoy. Okay, so this is a um, Christmas tree from London and let's start, start with traditions in the UK. And remember that UK is not only England, right? The United Kingdom, uh, consists of a few countries, England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Okay, so let's start with some basic information. So first of all, Christmas Eve is not a holiday. It's not a national holiday. People don't have time off, right? They have to go to work. But nevertheless, this is the time uh, when people decorate their houses and gardens. I mentioned before in the previous lessons that they put up holly wreaths, they put, put up stockings, they put up a Christmas tree. They decorate, they slightly decorate their houses and outside of their gardens. But usually in Britain, you don't get to see any kind of religious references, right, in decorations, okay? You would rather see a star than an angel and uh, outside uh, in the gardens uh, people would rather have reindeer and Santa Claus than uh, some nativity uh, place, um, uh, some, some things connected with nativity place, right? Okay. Children hang up stockings by the fireplace. This is different than in the USA because in the USA children get presents under the Christmas tree. They don't hang up their Christmas stocking, or maybe they do, but only as a decoration, right? But this is a British uh, custom to hang up stockings to get some presents. The 25th of December is a national holiday, and it's a very important day for the British people. Uh, presents are opened in the morning uh, of the 25th of December, and Christmas dinner is also served on this day. So what can you eat on Christmas dinner? So look at the pictures. So Christmas dinner is served and you can get roast turkey, some veggies like Brussels sprouts or carrots or broccoli, Yorkshire pudding, which is, um, I mentioned that before, I think when we were talking uh, during the summer about traditional food, but this is kind of a butter, chasto, right? It's not very healthy, but it's really nice. And they serve it with gravy. Podają to sosem pieczeniowym i to jest taki jakby dodatek zamiast ziemniaków. Then you can also eat bacon wrapped sausages, czyli takie kiełbaski małe, zawinięte w bacon i upieczone i to jest naprawdę pyszne. Jakkolwiek nie brzmi to bardzo wigilijnie, jest to podawane. I jest to taka dosyć typowa potrawa. Christmas pudding is one of the most common desserts. Christmas pudding to jest taki deser. Mm, postaram się wytłumaczyć, jak on jest zrobiony uh, w języku angielskim. So it's a very heavy cake. Uh, it's made for a long time, like three weeks or so. It's, uh, first it's baked, then it's soaked in some alcoholic beverages. Uh, 
Uh, inside this cake, there are some raisins, some nuts, there is a lot of nutmeg and spices. And um, then it's all kind of set on fire and the alcohol burns out. And it's really, really, really nice in taste, but very, very heavy and very, very sweet. You can see it in the first picture. Uh, it's decorated with holly. So it's kind of a nice cake to have at Christmas, but it doesn't taste, uh, it isn't to everyone's taste. Not everybody will like Christmas pudding. Mince pies are those little uh, little cookies. Uh, in inside of those little cakes, little cookies, you've got some uh, raisins, some nuts, and uh, it's already uh, nice and spicy. And you've got them in the picture as well. You can find them. Eggnog. This is an a drink. Um, it's kind of like Polish uh, kogelmogel, similar. It's made of eggs and also from other stuff like cream. Uh, it's really nice and tasty and some people add alcohol to it and then it becomes uh, Polish air cognac, but it's really uh, popular to drink it without alcohol and even children have eggnog and it's basically like Polish kogelmogel. And you can also uh, see uh, in the last picture a trifle a trifle is some um, kind of a strange dessert because it's a uh, fruit and some uh, cream uh, mixed together with a sponge cake. Sponge cake to is and it's all kind of covered with custards. It's really uh, they serve it in bowls, uh, as you can see here, or in some big um, uh, containers, and you eat it with a spoon. So it's not actually like cake. It's more like a dessert, but it's really nice and tasty. And if you have uh, any occasion, any opportunity to try trifle, please do, because it's really nice. And trifles come in all sorts of uh, tastes, because you can have a tri trifle with ra raspberries, you can have trifle with, uh, with chocolate, and with nuts, you can have with uh, gooseberries, uh, with uh, mango, uh, with tangerines, and with apples. So basically, trifles are really, really it's like a wide variety of, uh, of this dessert and you can try of many types. And what, is, what other things are important about British Christmas? Uh, well, the important thing is to pull a Christmas cracker. A Christmas cracker is kind of a, it looks like a sweet, but big like that. I had one, but I lost it. You pull it at the side and inside of this cake, you always find a joke, a really bad joke actually, but everybody loves it. A kind of a, some kind of a hat, it can be a crown or it can be a normal hat, and a little toy, the type of toy you would find in a chocolate egg. Okay, so something like that, but it's, it's a very important tradition for the British people, and they pull the crackers, and the crackers make the cracking sound, and it has to be done after every Christmas dinner. Then, another thing that every British family uh, must uh, listen to is the Queen's annual speech. Every year on Christmas Day, the Queen addresses her nation, addresses the British people, and talks about what she achieved uh, in this year and what the year was like. And she wishes him uh, a happy holiday and Merry Christmas. And it's a very important tradition to listen to the Queen's speech. And here you've got a photo of the Queen making her speech to the nation. Actually, she uses very nice language, so I think everybody will understand. So maybe if you have some time on Christmas Day, listen to the Queen's speech. Then we come to the Boxing Day, which I mentioned before in the previous lesson. Boxing Day is the 26th of December. Why is Boxing Day called Boxing? Well, it has nothing to do with box as a sport, right? Uh, it has more to do with boxes and it probably uh, refers to the tradition uh, that the first day after Christmas, the first working day after Christmas was a day on which British rich people gave little presents to their workers, to their servants. And those presents were usually in boxes. And that's why this uh, day is called a Boxing Day, because in the past, poor people, servants, lower social classes got presents from their uh, uh, their employers. Another tradition is that the children uh, send their wish lists 
to Santa by setting the list on fire. So they write, a le uh, write their wish list for presents, right, or a letter to Santa, and they set it on fire and put it in the fireplace. In America, you normally send those letters, right? In Britain, you burn them, and in this way, through the fireplace and the chimney, the letters find Santa. Uh, people, uh, another tradition is, the f is that people go out and watch nativity plays and pantomime. Pantomime is a play, a show without words, so children usually and maybe some neighbors, they use only uh, mime, they show with their bodies some actions, uh, some stories. And nativity play is like Polish Yasełka, so it's about the birth of Jesus. But uh, British nativity plays are very special because in a British na nativity play you can even meet crabs and spiders. Okay, so if you have an occasion to watch a British nativity play, watch it. Another another thing that you may find uh, interesting about British Christmas is that some British people refer to Christmas as crimbo. Why crimbo? What does it mean? Well, crimbo means that they don't refer to the religious part of Christmas, but to the other stuff, like buying things, having a nice atmosphere, spending time with family and friends. It's kind of more secular, świeckie, right? So if you talk about Christmas in a secular way, you can use the word crimbo, okay? So it's a nice word to use in your work, for example, if you're in assignments. And now we move on to another part of UK, namely Scotland. And Scotland is, uh, they celebrate Christmas, and the special thing that they do on Christmas is having bonfires, okay, ogniska, and they dance and sing around those uh, bonfires, and they also play bagpipes, because this is a national Scottish instrument. They celebrate, uh, in a more kind of special way, they celebrate New Year's Eve, and maybe before Christmas time, I will tell you about Scottish New Year's Eve. And in Wales, which is another country in the United Kingdom, uh, uh, the Welsh people are basically very famous for their good singing voices and uh, they actually use their voices to sing carols and uh, they've got really loads of carol contests so people sing carols and the jury chooses the best carolers and uh, they also come out to their main squares, like in Cardiff, and start singing. And also they go to pubs in the evenings and also sing carols. So basically, Wales is all about singing carols. And uh, a difference to, uh, the U to the English table, dinner table, at Christmas, is that, that the Welsh people tend to eat goose more than the turkey, more often than the turkey. And that's also another difference. And also their dessert is different. Their dessert is not Christmas pudding and not trifle. Uh, it's taffy. It's kind of chocolate toffee cake. I tried to find pictures, but I couldn't find anything uh, that would look, you know, nice so that you could feel, uh, you could kind of have a taste of it by looking at it. But if you find taffy, uh, or if you have an opportunity to try out taffy, try it because it's a nice, uh, nice dessert, really, really tasty. Chocolate and toffee must be tasty. Okay, and now we come to this country of down under, Australia. Australia, as it lies in the southern hemisphere, this, they celebrate Christmas, not in winter like we here. And uh, they celebrate, like us here, they celebrate Christmas in summer. They celebrate Christmas um, when there is 35 degrees Celsius and it must be uh, slightly different. As you can see in the picture, they built snowmen, actually they built sandmen, and they celebrate like that. Uh, and uh, contrary uh, to uh, how Santa comes to children in Poland and in most of Europe, Santa comes to Australian children on a surfboard or on a life-saving boat. Uh, people meet up in Melbourne and sing carols together on Christmas Eve and this is the day where they start celebrating so they actually start celebrating on Christmas Eve by singing carols and Melbourne is special because they do it kind of in the main square in the center of the town. I wonder how it's gonna be this year. And uh, the traditional Australian dinner includes turkey or ham or pork so it doesn't have to be turkey it can be ham or pork and uh, also the Australian people eat um, uh, flaming plum pudding or mince pies for dessert. Uh, flaming plum is a 
kind of a plum cake. Uh, I've never eaten it, but I must try and, and make it, and then I will tell you how it tastes. I mentioned what I mean spice are, so you should know and have an idea. Uh, and some Australians uh, have their Christmas dinner actually at the beach as a picnic, or they uh, organize barbecues in their back gardens or in their backyards, or as, as they call them. And they also celebrate uh, on Bondi Beach in Sydney, which is one of the most famous beaches in the world. So basically, they surf and have picnics on the beach. And Australians are very active, so they don't spend their days, their Christmas day eating. They also play cricket or swim in their pools. Imagine if you start eating, like in Poland, basically we start eating on Christmas day in the morning, uh, on Christmas Eve in the evening, and then we eat the whole Christmas day, and then we eat the whole Boxing Day, right? So we eat for two and a half days. Imagine it's 35 degrees. Would you be able to eat so much? No, you would have to move. So probably that's why Australians try to spend their time actively. Okay, and let's move on to the Christmas in the USA. So, uh, traditions in the USA differ from state to state and there are different tales about Santa, for example. In California, Santa Claus comes on a surfboard, but in New York, he kind of normally, traditionally, uh, moves around on a sleigh drawn by a reindeer. Uh, in the capital city, Washington, D.C., uh, the president lights a giant Christmas tree by pressing a button. And this is like a big story. They broadcast it. This tree is huge. Uh, you've got a picture of this tree uh, here. And you can, uh, you can see it. And uh, another information interesting about uh, the USA is that Alabama was the first state to introduce Christmas Day as a holiday. And since 1870, Christmas Day is a federal holiday, and I also mentioned that on the last lesson when we are talking about Christmas facts. And uh, another thing we should know is that most homes are decorated with holly, mistletoe, and branches of trees, and decorations are really lavish. So if you see a British home, British home is kind of, how to say, modest, skromne. Americans, like, they give a full blast, right? They go, they give all, uh, all of their heart to it. And usually, they've got so many decorations that they even have contests in the streets. Who's got more lights on their houses? Uh, try to think about the films, Christmas films, American Christmas films that you have watched in your life, and you will know what I mean. Okay, another thing uh, about Americans, different from, this Brit uh, from Britain, is that their dinner can be different. They can have roast turkey, but they can also have goose, duck, or ham. And they also serve it with cranberry sauce, like which doesn't happen in Britain. And they eat plum pudding, uh, like uh, Australians, or pumpkin pie, because they eat pumpkin pie on every holiday in the winter time. And I recommend you to try pumpkin pie. I made a pumpkin pie last week and it was delicious. In 1863, Santa Claus got his name. Uh, he was a, a red, uh, he, he wears a red suit and smokes a pie and that's pipe and that's an American invention. Santa has two homes in the USA. The first one is Connecticut. Uh, he ha he and he, him and his helpers um, live there and they make uh, all the presents there. There is a workshop. And another home is in Wilmington, uh, where there's like a stable uh, for the reindeer and the whole village for Santa. So he's got two homes in the USA, apart from his obvious home in, the, in Lapland. And hmm, what happens, uh, what, do, what do Americans do on Christmas? They uh, visit families and go to church, and they are more religious than the British people, and I think it's worth to remember. And how about Canada? Oh, Canada. Canada is lucky, because in Canada they always have a snowy Christmas. And decorations are so popular, uh, but not like in America, you know, to have a lot of them, and not like in Britain to have a lot of uh, secular, świeckich things, decorations. They use elements of nativity play. So they would put Holy Mary, Jesus, uh, shepherds, wise men into their gardens for people to enjoy. On Christmas Eve, people visit the Midnight Mass. So that's another uh, similarity to Poland, that people go to Midnight Masses on Christmas Eve. And when they get home from the church, they eat pork pie uh, or small meatloaf uh, bowls called bullets. And I must tell you that when my family in the past, uh, after the midnight, after the midnight mass, they also used to eat a lot, but something completely different. They eat a lot of kashanka, so this is called black pudding in English. So maybe it's kind of similar tradition. And the traditional dinner in Canada is 
roast turkey with vegetables and a variety of sauces, fruity Christmas pudding with brandy sauce, and um, another thing interesting to know is to know something about the Eskimo people, which are the uh, original inhabitants of the northern part of, uh, of Canada, for example, the Inuit. Uh, they organize their special winter festivals. They are huge celebrations. They are called Sinktak. And in the celebrations, they do a lot of dancing. They dance, they sing, and they give each other presents. So it's like a big Christmas party for everyone. Uh, in other parts of the country, on the other hand, uh, every morning is started by Christmas singing, by singing carols. And now I'd like you to mention a few interesting things because both British and American families, uh, and generally not even families and friends, they watch films. And there are some films that you must absolutely see. And on the list of British films, the first film everyone must see uh, of a, about Christmas is Love Actually. Love Actually, you've got it uh, in the poster. Love Actually is a film, uh, I, I cry every time I watch it, basically. Uh, it presents a few stories uh, of families, of single people, of uh, newlyweds, of uh, children uh, that uh, are sad, but with a happy ending and they are those people are connected in some way it's a really good theme and i don't know um if you heard about it but we've got a polish film list do m and supposedly list do m was kind of supposed to be similar to love actually but love actually is much better and it's got great actors like emma thompson uh, and for example uh who else is there uh colin firth my absolute favorite, and Hugh Grant, so basically all the best British actors you can think of. Then another film is The Holiday. It's a romantic story about two girls, one from America and one from England, who decide to swap their flats for Christmas time because they are unhappy. So the girl uh, from America, from actually from California, comes to a little village near London, and the girl from a little village near London goes to America to have a big holiday of her life. And they all kind of fall in love and it all turns out well. Another thing, uh, another film that you should watch is Last Christmas from last year. It's a story about a girl who is uh, terminally ill. And she kind of has visions of some men that she falls in love with, but it turns out that it's, oh no, I'm not gonna tell you what it is about. You have to watch it, you have to watch it. I'm not telling you the story. Then Bridget Jones' Diary. Uh, it's also a Christmas film because it uh, has a Christmas theme to it and we know what it's all about. It's about a uh, 30-something-year-old woman who is desperate to have a husband. And another film that the British people uh, like is Scrooge or basically any other adaptation of A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. And it's a good story and I think you've read it as well. To jest opowieść wigilijna. Myślę, że to czytaliście w szkole albo dopiero czytacie. Polecam bardzo dobre, bardzo dobry kawałek literatury, a warto też obejrzeć film. Ok, and American movies. So absolute must is a miracle on the 34th street. It's, a, it's ancient, this film is ancient. It's from the 1940s. To jest chyba film z lat 40 i to jest taki absolutny klasyk, który trzeba zobaczyć. E, też wam nie powiem o czym to jest, bo musiała zdradzić. Then we've got The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, and I'm sure you know it. It's kind of a comedy, black comedy, uh, about the creature that doesn't want the Christmas to happen. The Christmas Chronicles, actually I think there is part two now on Netflix, so you can watch it as well. It's about Santa and about his life and about his adventures. And the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, you've got a poster of it. Do you remember the Griswold family and their Christmas vacation? So this is uh, what it's all about, a lot of laugh. And I also put another film here, Home Alone. But actually this film is not as popular in America as it is popular in Poland. So have a nice evening and maybe watch a film.